one way to um, to sense this is through you could say vibration or um, yeah, I think that's probably the best way to describe it um, quantum mechanically. So like the vibration of two entities or humans, let's say, um, in conversation with each other, and I'm just going to blow this up out of proportion just to make it a point to make it easy to understand. But where one human, let's say, is more meditative and has a deeper sense of peace and equanimity and happiness, joy. Um, and then the other human has a, um, a stress, high levels of stress and high levels of agitation and high levels of um, anxiety and maybe even depression. And um, this one typically thinks that they're a victim of the universe. And this one typically thinks that they're the creator of their reality. And so then, um, then the way, yeah, the way that these two interface, you could say vibrationally, is that the creator, the more meditative, the easeful one, you could say, if you want to follow some of the Eastern as well tradition, that the chakras or the energy centers inside of the body are less blocked. And so in the Taurus, right, of the flow of energy in the body, in the central nervous system, up the actual spinal channel and out the top of the head, that that is less blocked, but in the one that has greater dis-ease, those the channel and the energy centers are more blocked and so the words that come out of the mouth of the one that is more blocked are typically the words so you can sense it bodily based on vibration but you can also sense it in the words that they speak right the logos these words are very telling of like the state of the frequency or the vibration that the entity is at so for example for them they might speak in ways that are trying to extract something to make them feel good, um, to make them feel worthy or get some validation or something like that. Um, they want to get peace from outside of themselves. And then just to briefly contrast, the one that's more meditative is typically speaking or using words in ways that are trying to serve life um, from an emptier place from a place that's already whole or already fulfilled. And so you can tell by the way people speak vibrationally, you could say quantum mechanically. So is the, the knower, the observer, perhaps, I, I don't know what the right term is, but the one who is more at peace with them, themselves acting like an energy sink. So yeah. it's a lot of drawing out of the negative energy of the, of the, of the observed. Yep. I mean, it's interesting to me from a physical perspective because I stumbled onto this whole um, homology between a black hole and a cell. So this um, Bekenstein back in the mid '70s had discovered he was trying to determine the total energy of a black hole, and contra contrary to what he had expected, that it was going to be related to the volume of the black hole. It was actually related to the surface area. And so I started, and because of the, the similarities between a black hole and a cell in the, in the context of gravity, um, I always forget this term, something. So basically the, 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 there's a horizon element in the black hole. And I, I am of the opinion that the cell does the same thing in its ideal state, its information, its being is on the surface. And that if you were in a negative, if you're that observed, person who is in kind of a negative state of consciousness that the the information is is uh hidden but that you can extract it right through the way the way that you describe something like that mm. does that, mm. does that make sense yeah and as as you were referencing earlier it's um important where if the one that has the energy blockages is interfacing with the one that's more free and does not have the energy blockages, typically what's happening is that the one that is more free is typically reflecting something 
to the one that is more blocked. So the one that is more blocked is typically asking the one that's more free for this reflection. And the, the one that's more free provides some sort of reflection that then for the one that's more blocked, they'll like go through an internal process of, of going to wherever that block is energetically and liberating themselves from that block. So say that um, I'm speaking in a way that's manipulative because I'm trying to get people to see me for my self image and to think that I'm really cool. Um, so then what usually the one that will reflect will do, it will reflect something to the one that's trying to get validation by through self image and it'll get them to recognize that pattern of behavior. And then simply by seeing that pattern of behavior that they were expressing, they can then free themselves of that pattern of behavior and just feel automatically whole or more free rather than needing to extract validation or trying to get people to see their, them, their self image to feel whole. So it's simple things like that with like reflecting behavioral patterns um, or um, another one. So in it, in just briefly also, it's because the work has to be done by the entity themselves. The work is never done outside of the entity. The work is always chosen by the entity themselves to go into the space where they don't want to go, you know, shadow, unconscious, subconscious, etc. And by going into those regions, that's exactly where the transformation happens. The, the caterpillar becomes the butterfly, if you will. The metamorphosis happens, transmutation, transformation, alchemy. All of those good things happen simply by turning to the areas inside of oneself where we don't want to go. And that if we just go, that then we can actually feel free and freer in our expression and actually more in service to life and less trying to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually even considered in that, you know, lateralization in the left, right brain, when you and I look into one another, one another's eyes, there is not, you eliminate that left, right dichotomy, right? So, you know, in the, the capacity to do that in an authentic way, may not be, you know, like a switch, but I think it, it has something to do with that authenticity of that interrelationship uh, is my sense. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. But what you just described, I mean, is this all coming from Eastern Vendetta, uh, Vedantic um, theory or, or uh, belief? Uh, where, where, or is this just your own way of understanding the interrelationship of the two, of the, the two inter, you know, uh, parties involved? Where is it coming from? What you just expressed to me? Um, I would say um, mostly through direct experience, and then um, the just the distillation of um, what is most cutting edge about that possible. So, um, yeah, just the synthesis of all of the peak of scientific literature, as well as spiritual literature, as well as direct experience with this process. Um, we have an organization called the No Limit Society. Um, we're basically training free agents for the ignition of global awakening. And so in this process, we have hundreds of people coming from around the world that are interested in how to sort of empty themselves of their own self-interest and their own self-image and their own ego and shadow and subconscious and whatnot, and be more like empty vessels for the life waking up to itself and how to like architect out these nations around the planet that are decentralized, that have the basic needs be met, that swim in abundance, energetic abundance, awake abundance. I mentioned to you earlier this Shambhala. And so you could say it's, um, it's both like a... Um, it's like Buddhist and Vikings at the same time, right? So you have like the Elon Musk entrepreneurial excitement creation, but at the same time, you have the Buddhist realized awakened ones. And so it's, a, it's, it's like the simultaneity of that. Um, so yeah, mostly through direct experience and also through, um, through my team here, through 
um, the different scientific and spiritual literature and distilling that and just parsing for signal above everything else, like just parsing for truth for signal above everything else, because there's just so much um, to, to try and swim through and like and learn. Um, but if you find what's most um, salient, most relevant, um, the needles in the haystack, if you will, um, an accumulation of thousands of needles in a lifetime swimming across different haystacks. Oh my gosh, those needles just compound on each other. And then we can describe the physics of metaphysical phenomena. So like in this case, these two entities, one feeling more free, one feeling more blocked, we can actually express at a scientific, at a physical level, what's happening metaphysically. And it's, it's so, so interesting. Yeah. 